From the ridgeline high above that choked and sputtering river, I watched as both armies drew near. They assembled from all sides, one after another, with arms and creatures and all the panoply of war. The hordes of Tamakan gibbered and howled, stretching far into the distance, their drums echoing across the valley as they shook the very ground beneath our feet. But as the legions of Asgore drew up on the opposite side of the riverbed, naught could be heard save for the clanking of their war machines, the barking of their castellans, and the piercing shrieks of their slaves as they were fed to the fires of their father in darkness. In ordered ranks they deployed, deathly silent as they marched, and came to rest overlooking the ford. Even through the grime and falling ash, I could see the searing metal of their helms piercing the gloom. Smoldering steel scales and thick, blackened plates protected each warrior. And as the hush fell across the battlefield, the silence was sundered by the sound of their blades beating a deadly rhythm against their shields. Louder it grew, like an avalanche toppling a mountain, until nothing in this world could be heard but the endless crashing of blood-soaked steel. From far above, a great bull with wings of flame swept across the neutral zone. And as the horns of hell opened and signaled the charge for the Khan's great host, a thunderous salvo greeted them. The Uzkul Drathazar would feast well this day. You can take charge of your own Legions of the Darklands with Creative Assembly's latest DLC for Total War Warhammer 3, Forge of the Chaos Dwarves. For the uninitiated, gameplay involves taking the reins of a huge variety of factions led by unique legendary lords, building up your base of power on a turn-based grand strategy map, and duking it out with your enemies in real-time battles. With this latest DLC, the Chaos Dwarves' Lore of Hashet is introduced, and their fearsome roster is brought to life. From the lowly laborer units, to the stout infernal guard, the demonic war machines, and the brutal siege train, and more. These are led by three iconic lords, Drazoath the Ashen, Zatan the Black, and Astragoth Ironhand, each of which highlight the various aspects of the Chaos Dwarf civilization. Expand, exploit, and dominate the Warhammer world with unique campaign mechanics with the ultimate goal of constructing the Great Drill of Hashit to break open Hushit's domain and siphon his blood for cataclysmic powers. So click the link below to start playing today, and enjoy 10% off on Steam until April 20th. Far to the east of the Old World, across the peaks of the World's Edge Mountains, lies Zorn Uzkul, the Great Skull Land. It is a vast and inhospitable plateau where the bones of long-dead creatures have been scraped clean by the winds of time. This desolate, barren wasteland, choked with ash and soot, is blasted by scorching winds that howl across its plains, fed by volcanic activity that rims its outer edges. It is a realm seemingly incompatible with civilization, and yet, black spires rise from its shadows, and the fires of industry burn bright here. Millennia ago, during the Age of Ancestors, this land would become the target of Keraz Angkor, the everlasting realm of the dwarves. Great wealth existed within its uncharted depths, and many expeditions followed the trail of ore and gemstones northwards through the mountains and into the frigid deserts beyond. Connecting these Karaks to one another through a complex series of tunnels and excavated caverns, the dwarfs spread roots across thousands of miles of territory, creating one of the largest land empires in world history. But it was not to last. 5,000 years before the coming of Sigmar Heldenhammer and the establishment of his empire, the Great Catastrophe struck. 
And as foul things bubbled forth in endless tides from the rents in reality at each pole, trade and communication between the heart of the Dwarf Kingdoms and the holds of Zorn Uzkul grew infrequent, withered on the vine, then fell silent entirely. Cut off from their people and left for dead, these forlorn explorers steeled themselves for what was to come. And as darkness encroached upon their kingdom, their stubborn resilience, combined with their natural resistance to the stuff of chaos, worked a slow but dreadful change upon them. It is unknown how long they languished, or even how they survived their ordeals, but survived they did. And the scars from those trials manifested not only in physical form, but echoed across their people's psyche as well. The dwarfs that emerged were twisted of mind and body, pale and red of eye, protruding tusks gouging forth from hungry mouths. The stigmata of mutation had claimed them, fed them, nourished them during this dark age. And their language had warped, growing guttural and fierce. It was also at this time that they began worship of a new deity, one that better reflected the hopelessness and despair they had been subjected to. Harshat, father of darkness, made his malign presence known. And guided by this nightmarish master, the people of Zorn Uzkul were filled with a thirst for conquest, tyranny, and subjugation. For the first time, a select few of these Chaos Dwarfs were gifted with the knowledge of sorcery, though the use of these unholy magics came with the terrible price of petrification, their bodies slowly hardening into solid rock. And so, their empire grew. Consolidating their holdings at Uzkulak in the north, their settlements spread southwards along the river ruin, and slowly, steadily, over many centuries, they replenished their numbers, opening trade with the Kurgan, Tong, and ogres of the east, while enslaving those who could not defend themselves. Their expertise in artificing and engineering proved most useful in the rise of their civilization. But their people were still too few to provide the manual labor necessary for construction or work the forges of industry alone. Raids through the Darklands and the mountains beyond proved ruinous for orc and goblin tribes across the plateau. But in this new labor force, the Chaos Dwarfs found the bodies necessary to build their infrastructure and establish their place on the world stage. To the southeast of Uzkalak, through the Falls of Doom and into the wastelands beyond, they established their capital at Mingol Zar Nagrund, the Tower of Fire and Desolation. Shrouded in eternal twilight from ceaseless pollution and roaring machinery, they raised an enormous obsidian edifice and, at its peak, built the Temple of Harshat, their father in darkness. The deity who had revealed itself during the great catastrophe, who had steeled their hearts and forged them into people worthy of evading extinction. In the year 1000 of the Imperial Calendar, in order to fuel the ever-increasing demand for slaves, and to feed the fires of the sprawling metropolis Tsar Nagrand had become. A great sea canal was constructed underground, linking the capital to the Falls of Doom in the north, to the forges in Uzkalak, and the Sea of Chaos beyond. This waterway proved to be the lifeblood of the Drath Tsar Empire in more ways than one. Their fleet of ironclads and transports now had unfettered access to sea lanes both north and south, opening the slave trade and allowing for the sale of weapons and armor to the Norse and steppe tribes further afield. 
Combined with a sporadic railway system and significant advances in steam locomotion across open terrain that made traversing the Darklands much more palatable, the Chaos Dwarfs could more rapidly deploy their legions to the far-flung corners of their empire, while supplying their realm with the raw materials necessary to continue its expansion. In this way, the Conclave of Sorcerers, the ruling caste of Tsar Nagrant, exerted its influence far beyond the reach of the capital itself. However, it was not long before the river ruin became contaminated beyond repair, poisoned by effluent and toxic sludge as a consequence of their metallurgy, rune binding, and the eternally burning furnaces of Harshat which fed their filth directly into the channel. This molten slag and polluted corrosive byproduct was washed down the river ruin, past Pigbarter and into the scalded delta, creating a corrupted slurry as it emptied into the Sea of Dread. To the north of this steaming, stinking swamp, the Black Fortress was built, a citadel designed as a military outpost, headquartered by the Legion of Asgore, a site of exile for those indispensable but dangerous sorcerer prophets, in need of separating from their base of power and place of influence within the capital. From this stronghold, the slaver and warlord Drazoath led his armies in carving out a vast swathe of territory in the howling wastes serving as a vanguard against greenskin and ogre incursions, while ensuring the safe passage of slave caravans ranging across its desolation. With the exception of the massive force charged with defending the capital itself, the Legion of Asgore became the mightiest professional army in the Drathzar Empire, drilled ceaselessly and forged in a gauntlet of constant warfare on the frontier. Let us now take a closer look at this formidable host. The hierarchy within the Legion of Asgore is a simple one. A marked departure from the Byzantine politics and scheming castes of the Conclave in Tsar Nagrand. At its head is Drazoath the Ashen, commander of the Legion and lord of the Black Fortress, a sorcerer prophet long ago exiled from the capital and stripped of his influence. Now de facto ruler of a potential splinter kingdom, should tensions with the Tower of Tsar boil over into open rebellion. Serving as his captains and drill masters are the infernal castellans, cruel and bloodthirsty veterans with decades of combat experience. Their enforcers and bodyguards are the infernal iron swarm the greatest of the Infernal Guard, who serve as protectors for the ruling class. At the core of this elite fighting force are the Infernal Guard themselves, flanked by all manner of deadly war machines, constructs, and well-trained Chaos Dwarf infantry. Amongst the slave castes, the Hobgoblin race have distinguished themselves as the perfect thralls and enjoy a greater level of autonomy in Drathzar society compared to other greenskins, often utilized as light cavalry on the backs of starving wolves or as skirmishers, scouts, and fodder in screening for the main assault. Below them are the stinking hordes of menial orc and goblin laborers prodded into combat at gunpoint, whose sacrifices ensure the flames of Harshat remain eternally burning. But the binding force of the Legion are the Infernal Guard, an elite regiment of armored warriors, silent and imposing behind an iron mask of defiance. Let us now take a closer look at these individuals. The Infernal Guard are equipped to an exacting standard and with substantial financial backing. 
Yet, this is not as a result of their high rank in society. No, the Infernal Guard are a forgotten and nameless people, stained by failure and dishonor. Their ranks are filled with outcasts from society who seek a means to atone for their sins. Thus do new recruits, unable to bear their shame, embark upon pilgrimage to the Black Fortress. Here, they are stripped of land and title and reforged by a brutal regimen of training, physical punishment, and practical combat. As the final step in their induction, they are welded within scalding hot masks of molten bronze, shorn of their individuality and forced to forego all former bonds of kinship. Their identities thus subsumed beneath searing metal. They pledge fealty only to the Lord of the Black Fortress, and it is only through great feats of martial skill and distinguished service in his name that they can work their way back into society at large. For those skilled and lucky few, the Mask of Shame is eventually torn away, exposing the ravaged flesh of an evil soul, anonymity giving way to a newly reborn, reinvigorated, and vengeful warrior of the Darklands. In terms of equipment, the Infernal Guard's greatest asset is undoubtedly their Black Shard armor. Quenched in blood and dark sorcery by demon smiths deep in the forges of Harshat and marked with runes of contempt, Black Shard armor never truly cools. Virtually immune to small arms fire and able to turn aside even the fiercest blows from hammer, axe, and blade, its smoldering scales invigorate the wearer and drive him to greater acts of slaughter. For additional protection, they carry thick, brazen shields, which, when combined with the natural resolve of dwarfs, makes for an uncharacteristically disciplined chaos-aligned force, when compared to the reckless abandon of most northern berserker tribes. Indeed, their regimen and legendary discipline is reflective of a professional army, giving them an edge in those deep waters when morale and deeply ingrained training could make the difference between a mass rout and massacre or survival. In close quarters, the Infernal Guard make use of excellently forged and ensorcelled axes. When combat at range is required, they unleash the might of their fire glaives, a robust repeating handgun with a gromril tipped bayonet and a sturdy chopping blade affixed to the stock which doubles as a close combat weapon. Coordinated volleys from these handguns can devastate opposing armies and have a ruinous effect on enemy morale. But since the technology required to build these devious creations is far beyond that of the Empire or Kingdoms of the East, their supply is severely limited and infantry regiments are only equipped with them at great cost. On the battlefield, the Legion of Asgore seeks slightly elevated terrain with good lines of sight, looking to maximize the strength of their fireglaive and artillery volleys. Deploying infernal guard regiments in the center of their formation, they present a nigh-impenetrable shield wall that can only be displaced at great cost. In this way do the Infernal Guard help to repel the incursions of enemy forces into their lands while keeping the slaves of the Darklands firmly beneath their boots. Their elite regiments garnering a formidable reputation over the centuries. But a true understanding of their combat prowess can be best gleaned through a study of their confrontation with Tamokan, son of the Great Kurgan. In the year 2510 of the Imperial Calendar, the Maggot Lord and favoured of the Plague God Nurgle assembled a great war host at the ruined city of Zanbajin and marched on the Black Fortress to procure weapons, armour and potential allies. Despite being heavily outnumbered by the Chaos Hordes, 
Drazoath the Ashen and his legion refused to sell cheaply the legacy of Harshat and met them in battle on the banks of the River Ruin. For many hours, the tides of chaos were beaten back in their attempts to ford the channel. Wave after wave felled by merciless handgun volleys and artillery barrages. Yet, like the frozen seas of the north, the currents of war drove the numberless hordes ever onward, and close quarters combat was joined. As the guns began to fall silent, their ammunition spent, it took the combined efforts of a Dolgan war mammoth charge and a horde of plague ogres to break through the center. Surrounded and caught in a pincer maneuver as flying elements attacked their supply lines from the skies, pockets of the Legion's elite held their own in a hopeless situation. But in the end, it was not bloodshed that ended the conflict, but diplomacy. Despite losing many thousands of soldiers and monstrous creatures, Tamokhan pulled back his forces, sparing Drazoath and his army gaining a powerful ally for his coming invasion of the Empire, seizing the opportunity to plunder the legendary riches of the West and bring back slave hosts uncounted, Drazoath sealed the pact with the armies of Zanbaijin, gifting them hell cannons, arms, supplies, and the might of his legion. Together, the combined forces of Chaos and the Black Tower plunged deep into the heart of the kingdoms of men, fighting a brutal campaign that culminated in the Siege of Nuln. Although the battle proved disastrous for the great war host and Tamokhan was killed in the fighting, the Legion of Asgor retreated intact, loaded down with plunder, slaves, and technological marvels seized during their march across the Old World. Behind them lay a vast trail of destruction stretching from the Darklands, Blackfire Pass, and the realms of the Border Princes to the Grey Mountains in the West. A stout bulwark in defense, indomitable on the attack, and clad in the finest armor and weaponry forged in the furnaces of Mingol Zar Nagrand. The Infernal Guard and Iron Sworn form the elite core of the Legion of Asgore and reflect the fiery disposition and unwavering discipline of Harshat, their father in darkness. When the bellows of war echo across their hellish homeland, it is their legion that will lead the advance towards a new world order of Drath Zar dominance. You can lead such a force in the Forge of the Chaos Dwarfs DLC for Warhammer 3. You can also grab some of the amazing art from this episode on our Patreon, where we also provide script previews, community polls, and more. A big thanks to the current patrons for funding the channel and to the researchers, writers, and artists who made this episode possible. A huge shout out in particular to Indie Pride from Milk and Cookies Total War for today's script. Head over to his channel for the best Total War Warhammer content. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like and subscribe for more content and check out these other related episodes. See you in the next one.